So one last conceptual concept, well, like it's really a review of what we've been talking about that will continue into the next chapter. So we've been talking about electric field in the last section. And again, electric field was a way to describe how a charge influenced the region of space around it. And then in turn, if, a charge, if another charge, a probe charge or test charge was placed in that field, we could determine the force. Electric field was defined as the electric force that our test charge or probe charge would experience because of where it was. Electric potential, V, is also a way to describe the region of space around the charge that's creating the electric field. Electric potential has been defined to be the energy our test charge or probe charge would have because of where it was in the electric field. So both E and V are related to the charge that's creating the electric field, not the one that's going to feel the force or have the energy. But it turns out that these two, electric field and electric potential, always go hand in hand. Okay, so that's the relationship I want to show you. And where that comes from is circling back to, I think it was the first video, we were talking about the work. The work done by the electric force as a charge moved through some sort of displacement. Because the electric force is conservative, the work is also equal to the change in potential energy. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say potential energy is, I'm going to bring the negative to this side. The negative integral of the force, electric force specifically, dotted with the displacement, meaning the uh, motion through as this force is acting on a charge, essentially. With our relationship up here, though, if V is U over Q, then the energy a charge has is Q times V. The energy a point charge has depends upon its charge and the potential, the electric potential it happens to be at. But a change is also going to be equivalent. The potential energy of a charge will change if it moves through a potential difference. I'm going to put this right here. So Q delta V, I'm putting that in for you. Electric force, if I come to our first relationship over here, the electric force a charge experiences is equal to that charge times the electric field the charge resides in. I'm going to substitute that in here. It turns out that test charge, the one that has the energy or the one that feels the force cancels out when we set up this relationship. This here tells us that there is a potential difference whenever we move parallel to an electric field line. If you remember, the dot product gives us a scalar answer, meaning delta V is not a vector, but it only accounts for the component of the electric field that is parallel to that displacement. This is our fundamental relationship, which of course can be written in terms of cosine theta as well. If there's an electric field, then if you move 
parallel to the electric field lines, then you will move through a potential difference. Okay. Now, this chapter has focused a lot on a uniform electric field. Oops. So the example we used a lot was our capacitor. I'm going to do this backwards this time. I think I've been doing positive on the left side the whole time. I'm going to put it on the right side this time. Regardless of which side I make positively charged and negatively charged, we know the electric field is uniform and it points from the positive plate to the negative plate. This relationship for delta V, the delta V between any two points. So I need to choose two points to talk about. Let's have a point A and a point B. So there's no charge there, just two points in space. Delta V will equal, well, the electric field of the capacitor is constant everywhere between those plates. So I'm going to pull that out. I still have a dot product. The integral of ds is going to give me a delta s. All right. What we mean by delta S is an S final minus S initial. But again, because of the dot product, we can write this as the magnitude of the two vectors times the cosine of the angle between them. Ultimately, all that means, or what that fundamentally means, is we will only see a change in potential if we move from point A to point B or from point B to point A. We're only going to see a change in potential due to the component of displacement and electric field that are parallel to each other. So even if I had a point C, say down here in our picture, it's lined up with point B, but it's down at the bottom. Even though delta S would point from A to C, if we were moving A to C, we would still only care about this horizontal piece. This horizontal piece is all that matters in the dot product because that piece is what is parallel to the electric field. If you remember talking about equipotential surfaces in some of the previous videos, B and C would line or lie along the same equipotential surface, meaning there's no delta V between B and C. And that's because we're moving perpendicular to the electric field. So again, dot product, only accounting for the components of the vectors that are parallel to each other. All right, so let's talk about initial point being point A first, and final point being point B. When we do that, our delta V means the potential at point B minus the potential at point A will be, well, the angle between our vector that points from A to B. So A to B would just point to the left. The angle between that and the electric, ve electric field vector that also points to the left is zero. Zero degrees. So cosine of zero degrees is just one. So we would get negative E of the capacitor times essentially, I'm going to call that just D, the distance between A and B. 
So the potential difference in here specific to this capacitor where we have the uniform electric field will be negative E of the capacitor times the distance between those two points. We get a negative answer. What does that mean? Now again, this is a scalar, so negative does not mean to the left. We get a negative answer because E and delta S point in the same direction. That's why we get the negative answer. Well, scalar answer for VB minus VA to be negative. VB must be less than VA is what a negative answer means. This means the potential at B is smaller than potential at A. That's what that means. So point A is a higher potential value than point B, lower potential value. If our delta S pointed from B to A, our delta V would mean VA minus VB. I'm going to slide this to the left a little bit. This would still equal negative E of a capacitor times delta S times the cosine of theta, but our electric field points to the left. If we're going B to A, delta S points to the right. So this angle would be 180 degrees, which is negative one. So we would end up with delta V being positive E capacitor times that distance. The length of delta S is the distance between those two points. Positive answer. Doesn't mean to the right. It means that E and delta S point in opposite directions. So ultimately, if we get a positive answer, that means the final voltage or potential is greater than the initial one. This still tells me that A is a higher potential and B is a lower potential. So similar to our definition that electric field lines point away from positive charges and towards negative charges, we have another general rule. I'll write it over here on the right. Electric field lines point from higher potential to lower potential. Another way to say that is potential is higher, closer to positive charges and lower, closer to negative charges.
And that's a general rule that comes because of this relationship. So this chapter focuses mostly on a uniform electric field. Our next chapter in the night book, that's what we're using right now, we will look at situations like this where the electric field is not uniform. So for example, a long line of charge, we found E, oh, what was it, K2 lambda over R or something like that. Look, I, yes, for an infinite rod. So if I have these electric field lines pointing radially outwards from this infinite rod, then I know that there's a higher potential closer to the rod and the potential is going to get smaller and smaller as we move away from that rod. But we cannot use E of the capacitor because the E is not uniform. It changes with distance. So we would need to integrate this equation to find a potential difference between two points. Okay. So this right here is the fundamental relationship between electric potential and electric field. The equation with the integral in it is always valid. The equation we did for the capacitor was because we specifically knew the electric field was uniform, and thus we could take E out of the integral. But that does not work in all situations. So we're going to build on this in chapter 26, I think is what it is. So we're going to continue the same topics um, that talk about non-uniform electric field, and we'll start talking about some basic circuit elements as well.